disturbing, appalling, repulsive. Those are just a few of the words used this week to describe Governor Andrew Cuomo's alleged behavior towards several women who accused him of sexual harassment this year. And those claims were found to be credible this week in a bombshell report from the state attorney general's office. Attorney General Letitia James. The independence investigation found that Governor Cuomo sexually harassed multiple women, many of whom were young women, by engaging in unwanted groping, kisses, hugging, and by making inappropriate comments. Investigators spoke to 179 people over the course of the five-month investigation, including Governor Cuomo, and reviewed more than 74,000 pieces of evidence. All of that boiled down to one conclusion, that Cuomo had broken both state and federal laws related to sexual harassment. Ann Clark is one of the independent attorneys hired to handle the investigation. The governor routinely interacted with women in ways that focused on their gender, sometimes in explicitly sexualized manner, in ways that women found deeply humiliating and offensive. Both federal and state law prohibit gender-based harassment in the workplace. And investigators released hundreds of pieces of evidence to back up those claims, like emails, text messages, photos, and more. Like how top staff in Cuomo's office leaked the personnel records of Lindsay Boylan to reporters after she publicly accused the governor of sexual harassment. Boylan, who worked in the Cuomo administration, has said the governor touched her inappropriately and often made crude remarks at work, like a quip about playing strip poker. And records show that after Boylan came forward, Cuomo's top aides considered spreading a conspiracy theory that she was secretly working with Republicans to take down Cuomo and Clark again. A team of senior staffers, former staffers, and outside confidants with no official title or role mobilized to attack and try to neutralize Ms. Boylan by sharing disparaging information with the press. A second woman, Charlotte Bennett, accused the governor of similar behavior, saying he started a series of inappropriate conversations with her at work. According to Bennett, the governor asked her in detail about her sex life, including her experience as a sexual assault survivor, if she'd ever been with older men, and more. But when she reported that to her supervisors, they transferred her to another job and let the claims slide. She later quit altogether. June Kim is another attorney hired to handle the investigation. And then he came on to me. I was scared to imagine what would happen if I rejected him. So I disappeared instead. My time in public service ended because he was bored and lonely. It still breaks my heart. That's a quote from a text that Ms. Bennett wrote. And that behavior spread to Cuomo's inner circle, the report said. A state trooper assigned to his personal detail said Cuomo touched her inappropriately several times, including once when he ran his finger down her back and other times when he asked to kiss her. But she didn't report that behavior because she feared retaliation at work. And she wasn't alone. June Kim again. The coexistence in the executive chamber, the executive chamber's culture of fear and flirtation, Intimidation and intimacy, abuse and affection created a work environment ripe for harassment. After the report went public Tuesday, Cuomo denied those claims, saying the report was the result of political bias against him and that evidence in his favor was left out. Today, we are living in a superheated, if not toxic, political environment. That shouldn't be lost on anyone. Politics and bias are interwoven throughout every aspect of this situation. Cuomo specifically addressed the claims made by Charlotte Bennett, saying he did speak to her about intimate moments in her life, but that she'd taken those questions the wrong way. I thought I could help her work through a difficult time. I did ask her questions I don't normally ask people. But with the report out, Cuomo is now at a crossroads. For now, he said he won't resign, despite mounting pressure to do so. Leaders in both Congress and the state legislature have now called on him to step down. And even President Joe Biden, 
who is considered a close Cuomo ally, called for the governor's resignation this week in response to the AG's report. What I said was, if the investigation of the attorney general concluded that the allegations were correct, that back in March, that I would recommend he resign. That's what I'm doing today. Cuomo's other option is to write out the assembly's impeachment investigation in hopes that he can convince lawmakers to keep him around. Democrats in the assembly met behind closed doors this week and unanimously agreed that Cuomo should no longer be in office. Assembly Speaker Carl Hasty said that in light of the report, lawmakers would wrap up the impeachment investigation as soon as possible. In a statement, he said, quote, it is abundantly clear to me that the governor has lost the confidence of the Assembly Democratic majority and that he can no longer remain in office. Once we receive all relevant documents and evidence from the attorney general, we will move expeditiously and look to conclude our impeachment investigation as quickly as possible. If Cuomo is impeached, the state constitution requires him to immediately step down, meaning Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul would take his place for the time being. Then the Senate would hold a trial and vote to either convict or acquit the governor. We don't know how fast that would happen, but Republicans say the assembly should skip their investigation and move to impeach Cuomo immediately, Senate Republican leader Rob Ort. That is what we're calling on the New York State Assembly to move forward with those articles of impeachment, bring it to the, for, as a trial for the Senate, and our conference will be back and is ready to come back immediately. But even if Cuomo leaves office, Advocates for stronger sexual harassment laws say more should be done by the legislature to keep workers safe. Those conversations likely won't happen until January, when lawmakers are scheduled to return for the new legislative session. But in the meantime, they're now preparing to navigate New York's first impeachment of a governor in more than a century, if Cuomo doesn't resign.